Uh, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please, my lord, ladies and gentlemen, pray silence for Mr. Martin Lawler, your chairman. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to the magnificent Rebus Hall for this, the 27th British Ports Association annual lunch. And a special welcome also to our Ports and Shipping Minister, Nuskani, for sparing some of her uh, precious time to be with us today. We're acutely aware that there are one or two pressing issues taxing government at the moment, and as I say, your uh, presence here is greatly appreciated. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, as well as being Chair of the BPA, I also have a day job back in the northeast of England as Chief Executive of the Port of Blythe. And I'm absolutely delighted to see such a fantastic turnout here today, ladies and gentlemen. A record for this event, I believe. Clearly, news of my appointment has spread far and wide. <laughs> so much so, in fact, that we are being beamed by a video link to the overflow room um, just across the hall there. Um, and hopefully, uh, some additional guests there can therefore enjoy the speeches. If you are not enjoying the speeches, you are the added bonus of the switches off but um, hopefully it won't come to that. I'd like to start with uh, one or two thank yous, if I may. First of all, a big thank you to Rolla Sconing, DHV, uh, as our main lunch sponsor today, and also to the TT Club for sponsoring the drinks reception earlier. This support is greatly appreciated as it helps to make this event one of the highlights of the port sector uh, calendar. I'd also uh, like to thank uh, the uh, Council and Secretariat of the BPA, as well as all the participants in no fewer than 17 working groups for their hard work and dedication in uh, progressing the good work of the BPA, not just for the benefit of the association, but the wider benefit of the maritime uh, sector. And alongside such working groups and the day-to-day uh, business of the BPA, we also held um, some uh, very successful and well-attended uh, receptions in the UK and Scottish Parliament and the Welsh Assembly over the last year, alongside uh, seminars and uh, other events covering everything from coastal shipping uh, to safety, uh, good governance, etc. And many of you will have attended our annual conference last year in October, up in the Port of Tyne. Um, it really raised the bar. They provided the usual legendary Northeast welcome alongside a very well-managed event. And this very much sets a challenge to Belfast for this year's uh, conference. Now, booking opens, I believe, next week. So I would suggest you get your registrations in early for what um, promises to be another fantastic few days. Indeed, the BPA Treasurer and the uh, Finance Director of Belfast Harbour, Maurice Bullock, has been put on record as saying, no expense will be spared <laughs> in providing an unparalleled conference experience for all those um, that attend. At least I think that's what he said. It was a fairly noisy bar at the time. <laughs> and well, it's, whether it's our conference, uh, this annual lunch, uh, parliamentary receptions, these events do give us the opportunity to shout about uh, what we do at the BPA, but also the importance of the wider port sector. So I will take that opportunity again today, if I may. UK ports, of course, are the gateway for numerous uh, maritime sectors, whether it be cruise, fishing, offshore energy, leisure, or indeed the movement of general cargo, with UK ports handling 95% of the nation's uh, goods. But we're not just enablers of trade. We are the very foundation of the blue economy, providing safe navigation from vessels as small as jet skis to the largest uh, oil uh, tankers. And we do so independently and without cost to the taxpayer. And whether it be from Brazil to the UK, from England to Scotland, Movement of freight by sea remains the most efficient mode of transport. And your average uh, bulk carrier 
is still greener than even a Toyota Prius in terms of CO2 emissions per kilometre ton. So UK's ports are very much um, part of the solution and in no way part of the problem. Now to be fair, I am preaching to a degree um, to the uh, converter because we do have a very uh, supportive minister and indeed a supportive department in the DFT who are having to operate in relatively challenging times at the moment of course. And all we really ask is that this support continues and that government works closely with the BPA to ensure we have the right economic conditions and regulatory environment to allow us to prosper and also to support the uh, government uh, and the economy as a whole. Oh, I've left my note behind, never mind. Um, now, a good opportunity for that collaboration to continue is very much the Maritime 2050 um, strategy, um, which the BPA very much welcomes. Um, and for the first time, it probably puts um, coherent long-term planning in place and also presents uh, the sector in a positive light. So we look forward to working uh, with the DFT and other departments um, to uh, work on the important strands of that uh, document. Also on the policy front, we very much welcome the uh, announcement of the offshore wind sector deal, uh, which has come out recently, which targets an impressive 30% uh, of UK electricity generation from, UK wind, from offshore wind by 2030. And this is good news for ports because we act as essential bases for this uh, new and important sector. And indeed, we, um, we look forward to the 60% of uh, UK content that's also proposed in that document, which will hopefully drive inward investment, much of which will wish to locate in the vicinity of ports. Now, I am under strict instructions not to mention the B word today, um, but I couldn't finish without just making one or two slight references to exiting the EU. Firstly, government can rest assured that whether it ends up being a hard exit, a soft exit, or no exit at all, UK ports have the capacity, the experience, and the commitment to ensure that any associated disruptions are uh, short-lived, minimized, and that ultimately we will continue to prosper in the new UK trading future. But all we do ask is that this uncertainty is brought to an end as soon as possible, so it will unlock any paused investments, will hopefully secure any investments that have been at risk, and ultimately will allow us to do what we do best, which is running a world-class port sector. So that's probably enough from me for now. Um, thank you for listening. Hopefully the video link is still switched on. Um, and my last duty is uh, I'll take the pleasure of asking our Maritime Minister to say a few words in response on behalf of the government. Thank you very much indeed. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for that welcome. It is the first annual BPA lunch with Martin as chairman and Neil as vice chairman, and I would like to start by congratulating them both. I think you've already set the standards quite high. Is this the first time there's been an overflow room for the lunch? It is indeed. We want to take over the whole place then next year. No quids. No, no quids. In. Per perfect. Um, I look, very much for, um, look forward very much to working with you over the rest of the year. Please be assured of that. I'm delighted to see so many familiar faces. faces. I have been your minister for about a year now. In that time, I've had the opportunity to speak to many of you, and I've had the opportunity to go out and visit many of your operations. And if I was able to leave Westminster a little bit more, there are many more visits that I would undertake. And I agree with you, Martin. Our ports and our maritime sector are the basis of our country's economic success. I say it frequently, but it really is a privilege to be a minister for such a vital industry, to be its public advocate. 
underlining how ports touch the lives of people living both in coastal and inland communities, how they generate jobs, support businesses, and keep trade flowing in every part of the country in such a quiet and determined way. And I think it's fair to say that the debate around our departure from the EU, I'm afraid it's the B word, has undoubtedly raised public awareness of the crucial role of ports. I think that's been a very important outcome over the last two years. I know Brexit is probably the issue that is uppermost in your minds, and I'll, I'll start on it and we'll get it over and done with, and then we can move on. As you all know, earlier this month, the Prime Minister agreed an extension to Article 50 until the 31st of October at the latest. This extension can be terminated if and when the withdrawal agreement is ratified. The details of the extension have been widely reported in the media, and I won't go into it here. I'll take more than just one lunch to, to cover that. But be assured, the government's priority is to leave the EU with a deal as soon as possible to facilitate continued trade with our friends in the EU. I know that my own voting patterns have been commented by some of you here at lunch today. As well as being your maritime minister, I'm also a constituency MP, and um, I hope that you'll always find me a transparent minister, so I'll just place on record some things that have been commented on by a couple of you in this, in this room. I did campaign for Brexit. I did vote for Brexit. But when the result came forward, I saw what was happening in the country, and as a pragmatist, I fully understood the deal was going to be a compromise, considering who we had to negotiate with. So I did vote at every opportunity for the Prime Minister's withdrawal agreement. And when we had indicative votes and I had a choice, I did indeed vote for no deal because I fundamentally believe we need to keep no deal on the table if we are prepared to secure the best deal that we can. And I think most of you in this room, as business people, would understand my motivations for the way that I have voted. But please be assured that I will do everything I can, both as your minister and as a Conservative MP, to ensure that we get this over the line as soon as possible. I firmly understand the importance of business confidence and what we need to do is provide some assurances. I'm fully aware of the huge efforts that all of you are undertaking to prepare for all scenarios. And I appreciate that this unprecedented period of intense activity has been a testing one. And I do want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for your hard work, for your patience and the fact that it has to continue for a few more months. And I really want to say that it is appreciated by myself and my department and across Whitehall too. It is of course right that as leaders of your industry you challenge government to provide political clarity and direction, but we also rely on you to work with us collaboratively as well as taking criticism on the chin about the complications of politics and how that impacts businesses around ports and capacity. It's great to have even increased engagement with you over the last year and may continue going forward. And all of your efforts are indeed hugely appreciated. And I believe that we should not lose sight of the opportunities that our departure from the EU will create, allowing Britain to unlock new trade partnerships around the world, giving us the freedom to forge our own deals and govern our future. So as we prepare for Brexit over the coming months, I would ask that we continue in the same spirit of cooperation and collaboration that we have shown so far. Ultimately, we really do want the same thing. There may be some differences of opinion, but all of us want to deliver the best EU exit possible as soon as possible for the good of our country and the success of Britain's ports and the marine maritime industry. While of course our departure from the EU has dominated the political agenda in recent months, we do indeed need to look at our longer term as well. That's why, as you commented earlier on, I was delighted to publish Maritime 2050 at the start of this year. Our vision for the UK's maritime sector over the coming months. And I'm also delighted that the reaction it has received, not just from the maritime industry, but from government and other sectors too. I'm enormously proud of this ambitious strategy and you really should be proud as well because it's not just another document created in Whitehall, it's a roadmap for the future of our industry, for your industry. A future where ports are ready to adapt to changing market trends and embrace innovation. A future where technology such as interconnected smart systems and big data are harnessed to maximize efficiency, reliability 
and reduce costs. A future where you have greater confidence in your ability to deal with unexpected challenges such as severe weather or security threats and are fully prepared for those that are unexpected. For instance, the need to maximise land use and move towards full supply chain integration. In short, it's my hope that this strategy will prepare the ground for your industry's sustained success over the next 30 years. Many of you here will have helped to create it and all of you all of you will help deliver it. But while the launch of the strategy is a hugely important moment for your sector, I believe it is just a starting point for even bigger and better things. Now, if the UK port sector is to truly, truly reach its full potential over the coming decades, we must continue to set ourselves even higher standards and be even more imaginative. For instance, we need to think about how we can maximise the opportunities that stem from technological advances. We need to look at integrating digital systems. We need to consider the case for dedicated freight routes for import and export. Later this year, we will begin the process of making some of these things a reality with the development of our infrastructure route map, our plan for a programme to prepare for the challenges of the next few decades. But developing the route map, map is not a task for government alone. It's a process in which we all must be involved. We need to decide our mutual ambitions and priorities and ensure that those responsibilities are shared between government and industry so that together, together we can build a maritime sector that continues to be a world leader long into the future in all areas, from ensuring, ensuring we have a workforce equipped with the right skills to fighting against climate change, possibly the defining challenge of the 21st century, and one in which the maritime sector has indeed played and will play a crucial role. I recognize that your environmental obligations can sometimes be challenging to fulfill, and I thank you for all you do to meet them, and it's crucial that you continue to do so. As many of you will know, a year ago, at the IMO, the member states agreed a landmark global strategy for tackling the climate change impacts of shipping. The UK was a leading voice in these negotiations and we welcomed the setting of the ambitious target to reduce sector's emissions of greenhouse gases by at least 50% by 2050. And later this year, we will launch a clean maritime plan. It sets out how the UK can position itself as a world leader in the development and uptake of green shipping technologies and in the field of clean maritime growth. Of course, moving to this zero emission future will require close collaboration between industry and government. That's why last year we embarked on an extensive programme of industry engagement and held a science advisory council meeting dedicated to zero emission shipping. I would like to extend my great thanks to the BPA for presenting at that meeting and being such an active participant in this work. Your contribution is invaluable and we look forward to the publication of the Clean Maritime Plan this year. And over the next few months, we have a lot of work to continue to collaborate on. We have our second Maritime Safety Week in July and in London we have International Shipping Week in September. A wonderful opportunity for government and industry to showcase the UK maritime sector to the world. It's a real pleasure and privilege for me to present your industry on an international stage and I look forward to seeing all of you there. So to conclude, I'd like to thank you for your efforts over the past year. Thank you for your patience. It's been a great pleasure to work with all of you. And I would like to reiterate how proud I am to represent the, the interests of such an important sector. Britain's ports are at the heart of the country's extraordinary maritime past, and you really play a crucial role in its present successes. So let's continue on that path, and I hope and I look forward to working with you to secure a fantastic maritime future. Thank you.